I'm not sure where to start with this because there's no words to describe the depth of my grief over losing my only son. My loss is only made worse knowing that his death, death was absolutely senseless and it didn't have to happen and never should have happened. He was just taking his friends home and doing me a favor by putting gas in my car for work the next day. I often wonder if I had asked him not to get gas. Would he still be here? Or would I only have so if I could have delayed a few seconds? Or given him my daughter's car, would he still be here? My head knows there's nothing I could have done, but my heart still questions. My head knows not to blame myself, but my heart can't help it. I would have done anything in the world to save my only son, including putting myself in the car that night, and it should have been me. AJ was the whole world, a special gift from God for me to enjoy and take care of. He brought so much joy with his sports, baseball, summer hockey, winter hockey. His English grin and hearty laugh could brighten up the day no matter what. I cannot describe for anyone how much I love and live for you. This is how I want to remember my son right here. This is where I have to go talk to him. You took my son from me. He was just starting his life. He was going to college, making new friends, and planning for a future. And you took him from me. He will never know the joy of having a child, being a dad, picking a partner for life, or getting married. He loved all of us, especially Ellie, my granddaughter, more than anything, and showed it daily. My life has changed so much, I can barely get through a day. I still cry every single day as I have to open my windows and look at that site. I can't enjoy other people's weddings, baby showers. I can barely get out of bed and function. I myself have to live on medicine right now. If it wasn't for Tanya and Ellie, I know I would not be here because AJ needs me too. It is doubt. It is doubly hard to watch the grief in my daughter, my mother, sisters, and even Ellie. Ellie and I spend most of our free time at the cemetery where she sings and dances and plays songs for him. The concept of death is not yet, but she has brief memories of him and tells me how he comes to her and talks to her. And I just pray that this is all true. Mr. Rollins, I've seen your prior record and I know the court system tried to help you. However, you continued your dangerous and deadly drinking and drugging habits. This was not your first time. And I too came from an alcoholic family. I don't drink at all. I don't do drugs. I don't do any of that. So I, I, I do believe that you can make what you want of your life. Just because of your upbringing doesn't mean that's where you have to go. And while we were in the courtroom, how you stared and dogged me. I can't ex All you had to say just once, you could have said, I'm sorry. I expected to see some kind of shame and remorse, but not once. All I seen was you staring at me and laughing and waving. How dare you? I didn't think you could make my life seem any worse, but you have. AJ, Pat, and Cody have been friends since kindergarten. They were and still are very much part of my family and in our hearts. It tears me up to see the pain they struggle with every day, and you know your sense of selfish, stupid, reckless completely changed everyone's lives. They too have a loss to carry with them. I don't know if you've ever had friends like them. Obviously not. Because if your friends were with you, you would have never gotten behind that wheel. AJ and Mitch were not friends as long, however, I saw Mitch, while critically injured, and trapped in the wreckage with my son on his lap, rubbing his back, telling him everything was going to be okay, everything's going to be okay, I love you man, everything's going to be okay. How do you think Mitch is going to carry this the rest of his life? He was only 20 years old. Each night I wait for AJ to walk in and say, I'm home mom, is Ellie sleeping or I'm hungry? Every day I hope to wake up to find this is just a bad dream and that reality sets in I do not have my only son. Tanya does not have her only brother or Ellie her only uncle. And then I ask why? Why did this happen? Why did, what did we ever do to deserve this? It's like our lives are, are over too. The holidays can't be celebrated. My heart always went out to other people who lost their children, but no one can understand the pain, the emptiness, the hole in the heart until it happens to you. And thank you to Mark Rowlich, who took all this from me. 
how you get up and look at yourself every day in the mirrors beyond me. I know if AJ was here with us now and he had hurt anyone, he could not have lived with himself. I pray that you get what you deserve and your life is also a ruin. They say God forgives, but I, Mark Rollins, will never forgive. You were cold-hearted, you knew what you were doing, and never once did you show any shame or sorrow. I hope God never forgives and you too have to suffer the rest of your life. AJ's life is gone, so you should not have one either. My daughter and granddaughter suffer even more because it's hard for me to be happy in situations because of the pain that's slowly killing me. And this is going to be the death of me. It's the pain of losing my only son. All because of your stupidity. You knew you should not have been driving. And shame on you and shame on your mother for giving you her car that night. 